Yesterday, the latest Joe Rogan experience dropped, and his guest was none other than Graham Hancock, so it's certainly a JRE to watch. But even more of a reason to watch is that about 98 minutes in, Graham Hancock mentions my channel favorably to Joe's audience. So that's a good thing. That's the kind of publicity that would make a guy smile. But that's not the, my favorite part of the whole hangout. The whole entire podcast, the part that made me smile the most, was right at the very beginning. When Joe called out Flint for, as Joe put it, playing fast and loose with the facts. When Joe was being tactful, I'll be more blunt, Flint was full of crap. He deliberately misled people in order to win the debate. He lied, as I have said before. He was dishonest. There's no two ways about it. So seeing Joe acknowledge that, well, <laughs> needless to say, that made me smile. So I've got a few things to say about that. i got a few thoughts about the whole Joe Rogan podcast here with Graham, and I'm going to go ahead and expound on that for you now because, well, this is my channel, right? So hi, my name is Dan, and welcome to Debunking. Well, one of the things to mention right off the bat, what makes me feel really good about this, even vindicated, you could say, is... I'm just a lowly electrician, man. I got a GED. I'm, I'm, I'm nobody compared to a real archaeologist when he spouts his facts. So when I call him out on being full of crap, and he just kind of, oh, you know, you don't really know what you're talking about here, data, data. You don't really get what you're saying here. You're full of crap. You, you're the one who's wrong. You're the one who's lying. It's kind of difficult to win that argument in the public's eye if they're not willing to look closely at the data. If they just look at the credentials, like Milo Rossi did, then they might find themselves favoring Flint instead of favoring me. But thankfully, Joe looked under the hood, took the time to examine the claims that I made in regards to the claims that Flint made, and saw that Flint was full of crap. Now, it wasn't just me that pointed this out. Sam from Illegitimate Scholar was calling out some of Flint's other BS things, too, and Graham mentioned him as well. So it's definitely a good a good day for both of us as far as that goes. Um but right off the bat, I, I just I have to say that I feel vindicated here. Um, I'm not like Flint was at the end of his debate when he was like, Man, I'm feeling good. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Somebody sent me this meme of me knocking out Graham. And boy, do I feel good. That's not where my head is, man. That's not, that's not the kind of person I am, I guess. Um, the, the, the bottom line here is, though, is, is I did feel like I was, I was in a fight with little Mac versus Mike Tyson for you old NES 80s nerds. Um, and I felt like I was going to get my butt kicked over time, that slowly over time, that people would just not look under the hood and see this as a PhD versus the, an unaffiliated GED in a different field. And, but nothing could be further from the truth. And now Joe has announced to the world, or his, his, the same audience that saw Flint win, now knows that Flint cheated. So that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned, because it's important to me that that gets across. I, am, I, I do love science, and I've got a big heart on for it being portrayed properly to the public. So a guy like Flint is actually, in my mind, he's kind of a traitor to my team, right? I, I love science enough that a guy who's going to misrepresent it in order to pad his own ego pocket or otherwise make his team look good is bottom of the barrel in my book. It was also really nice to see Graham just kind of confidently going over some of his old stuff. Like, for example, the idea that the different world navels were all part of some world mapping thing. Um, I remember when he first posited that in the Heaven's Mirror right there. Um, one of his most underrated books, by the way. But uh, in that book, he talks about this idea of different spots on the planet, the Condalabra of the Andes, the, uh, the uh, Naval Adelai, uh, at Egypt, at uh, Easter Island, and these places being spaced a certain number of degrees apart in order as a way to map the globe or to like keep track of things. Um, I'm not 100% sold on the idea. It's interesting, but it was nice to see Graham just kind of come out and lay it out, be like, this is what I think. And, and when he's talking about, like, the moving stones and stuff, and he, he was unapologetic when it came to just, like, you know, they're, they're not explaining this stuff adequately. And I agree with him. They're not explaining this stuff adequately. He's very right. There is certainly some technologies that were brought to bear that we're not aware of. There's no way about it. Now, whether or not that that was something that would qualify as high technology, that's something we could argue about all day long. And most of you know, I'm not really a fan of the idea of high technology. But 
different than what we use, differently. When they said, both Graham and Joe agreed that this civilization was better at working stone than ours is, absolutely right, 100%. You can't really argue that. You look at Sacsayhuaman or a place like that, and you, you, the amount of energy that would go into making something like that would preclude us from ever doing it. It's not saying that we couldn't. It's just that that's like that's the, the, the amount of energy to take for that. That's the kind of shit to launch a satellite into space. Why the hell would we stack a bunch of rocks with that? So they definitely were were up to something different than we were because I doubt they had that kind of manpower and stuff. But anyway, it was nice to see Graham get into that with Joe and be, just be so confident about like, man, this is where I'm at with these things. This is where I'm at with these things. And this is where I'm not sure. Um, he really seemed uh, more himself than he did in the debate. And that was really nice to see. Now, one thing that Graham mentioned that has had me kind of like looking inwards at my own stuff, not when Graham mentioned it, I've already been looking inwards on this stuff already, but hearing Graham talk about it was nice. Um, the solidarity that the archaeological community shows compared to what the alternate historians show is like the difference between a bunch of soldiers and a bunch of cats. Like we're, we're just, we've all got our own different ideas and we argue amongst ourselves compared to these archaeologists that get in these ranks and defend their paradigm to the last there's kind of a problem there. Like, um, there's a lot of people that, that infight in our groups over kind of silly stuff. I mean, really, a lot of small things. And um, that hurts us. Ultimately, we could be a lot more effective if we just didn't argue with each other so much and spend a little bit more time just making sure that the criticisms that are being levied against us were accurate. Um, it's, there's not, I don't have a problem with skeptically looking at somebody else's argument, but like, uh, I, for example, I've seen a lot of people arguing um, different locations for Atlantis, and people get heated about it, and it's like, dude, come on, man, it, we're talking about a lost civilization here. Why do you get so hell-bent on where it has to be and all this, as opposed to just like looking across the aisle and saying, these guys have more in common with me than they don't in the regards that we are both flying into the face of mainstream archaeology and guys like Flint Dibble are going to be calling us racists in any time soon. That's the kind of thing that we're all facing here. And instead of, of, of like being like presenting a unified front against guys like Flint and saying, no, we're not a bunch of racists and all this, get that shit out of here. Instead, a lot of us are looking inward and arguing about the position of Atlantis or whether or not they had Sonics or freaking alien, whatever, okay? All kinds of goofy shit that people argue about. I don't, whatever beliefs that you personally have in regards to that, you could probably, again, find more common ground with another pyramidian than you will with a guy like Flint. So that, that was kind of, um, that's something, like I say, I've been thinking about this one for a hot minute. So it was nice to hear Graham weigh in on that because it's honestly something I may be making a video about soon. We do need to stop. Like, there's some big names in this community that butt heads with each other for, from what I can discern, no real good reason. And that's, that's not a good thing. And the racism part, that was really nice to see Joe and Graham both just pointing out what a bunch of crap that is and how it's a scorched earth tactic. It's the kind of thing that you do in order to silence someone without actually addressing what they say. It was very good to see it called out as for what it was. And to be blunt, it was good to see Flint laid down for it. It was good to see him thumped on the noodle for it, giving a, a you need to do better, son, because this is, as Graham and Joe both expressed, it is the kind of thing that makes people distrust archaeology, makes people distrust science. So Flint may think that he, he won the debate, but that win was a loss, and you can see that in this video. Graham and Joe are telling millions that he was full of crap, and... <laughs> I'm really happy to see Joe talk about the feralization thing, which is, by the way, feralization is a plant returning to the wild after it's been domesticated, being feral again. Um, Joe asked Flint about that in the debate, and Flint was like, no, nah, thousands of years, don't even worry about it, and that was bullshit. And it was great to see Joe specifically call that out, because that was like the first full-length video I made on it. I know that I'm, I, to toot my own horn, I know that I'm the guy who kicked that information out into the public and said, hey, feralization does not take thousands of years. That's a bunch of bullshit. 
So it was nice to see that said openly on JRE and Flint held a task for it. Flint held a task for the racism thing. Basically, this is the, the idea that archaeologists are damaging their field is spot on. All right. Flint, specifically to you, since I know you watch my shit. Look, man, remember a year ago, me and you got along just fine. And remember in December, I uploaded a video showing that the origins of Atlantis hunting are not the way that you guys portrayed them in the letter from the Society of American Archaeology to Netflix. You remember that? And I showed you that, and you said, no big deal, because there's a word comet over here, and, 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 and it doesn't really matter anyway, because at the end of the day, racism is still part and parcel of the whole thing. That was basically what you told me. And that was the beginning of our falling out. And then you push this and push this and push this. And I was a guy in the beginning that was, you know, I, I liked Hancock and, and I would call out scientists for getting stuff wrong. But I would, would call out both sides and, and was frequently on team science. And you, sir, showed me that team science gives zero shits about the evidence. You care about your fucking narrative. And when it comes to the racism thing, that is deplorable. You are, you are using the... Accusations of racism. Oh, they're calling you guys racist. Hey, fuck you with that one. You are calling us racist. You, it's just as much as when I said you may have handled indigenous bones, I was accusing you of handling indigenous bones. That's what you told your audience, right? So, the same thing here, man. You are accusing us of spreading racism, of being racist, of being a problem to society. If you're going to go down that road, man, you really need to understand you lose all credibility in the realm of science. You are now purely a political talking head. You are not addressing the meat of the matter. You are talking from an ideological perspective and using that to scorch the earth around the person. So when somebody Googles Graham Hancock, they see, ooh, white supremacy. I don't know if I want to click on that. That's what you're trying to do. We all see through it. It cost you just in our personal experience flint we got along this created a rift between you and i and which ended up creating a rift between you between me and the majority of the archaeological community on the internet all right you did that by c just ignoring the evidence and continuing with your narrative regardless you showed me that you will not change your position in regards to the evidence while I was changing mine in regards to the evidence. So I have no faith in the archaeologists on Twitter. I have no faith in the archaeologists on the internet by and large. There's a couple of them that are okay. There's plenty in my inbox that are okay. But the ones that go out of their way to address pseudoscience, to a man, you guys are deplorable. That's how I feel, and you can thank Flint Dibble for that. Now, in the wake of the debate, when Flint basically BS'd his way to victory, we saw all the archaeologists and archaeology-adjacent people like Stefan Milo just all out there going, Yay, Flint, he won. But well, Stefan Milo, Atlantis is dead, and Flint Dibble killed it. Bringing Auten Shea Films is like, Oh, yeah, this is how you win against pseudoscience every single time. You just copy what Flint did, and you can win. So many videos like that. So many people interviewing Flint being like, oh man, you did so good. None of you, none of you looked at his arguments and said, maybe that doesn't quite make sense. That doesn't quite make sense. That doesn't, that's not very accurate. None, none of you. It was on me, an illegitimate scholar, to do that work. Two people that really are... I mean, he, he's got a degree in anthropology, but I, I mean, I, I'm an fucking electrician, man. I got no business doing this compared to a guy like Stefan Milo, who is archaeology adjacent. He should have been looking under the hood, but, but he won't do that. He's afraid to do that. He knows that challenging Flint Dibble will get Flint to go behind his back and tell everybody in the world what a piece of crap he is. I know this firsthand. Flint has gone all over the place trying to make sure Graham won't share my stuff that Milo Rossi won't share my stuff, that he just, he, he tells people flat out, if you talk to Dan, I won't work with you ever again. This, you know, <laughs> this kind of shenanigans is pathetic. You guys, 
you guys, as in the, the debunker, the archaeological community, should be holding Flint to task on your own. You guys should be looking at that going, dude, roll that shit back. You are going to go out there and get called out for being full of crap. But no, you don't. You pat him on the back and you say, get out there and do it, boys. And then what happens? Now, Flint, at the time of recording this, Flint has his tweets protected. Because well, a funny thing, when Joe Rogan points out that you were full of crap on his show, it tends to do bad for you in the freaking internet. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's almost like, it's almost like somebody who maintains a position of authority shouldn't bullshit millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> crazy fucking idea. <sighs> I know. It, 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 it's, it's hilarious to me that it got to this point. But I am, again, very happy and vindicated that um, it's saw by Joe. Um, I, of course, Graham is, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm telling Graham this guy bullshat his way to victory against you. It makes sense that Graham would be like, okay, that, that makes sense. But when... Joe sees it. Joe, Joe, when you watch the debate, Joe was listening to Flint. And then he saw the arguments that Flint were using were based on BS. And he mentioned that to millions. And that, my friends, is they lost the debate. Flint lost the debate. He may have looked like he won. He lost. He may have gained subscribers and he may have gained money from it. But at the end of the day, Team Archaeology lost big time because you guys look like shit when you send out this guy as your champion. And not only does he get made fun of for his appearance and for his demeanor, but he also ends up being a fucking liar. Now, the fact that this has happened, basically, the fact that Flint is going to now claim that he was lied about, he was harassed, he's going to double down on me and, and illegitimate scholar being mean to him and all this stuff. He's, he's definitely... He's not going to own his mistakes, and that's really where the problem comes from, okay? It's all right to feel like you were justified and made a mistake still. That's, man, that is acceptable, but he didn't make justifiable mistakes. Flint prepared his debate beforehand, and he came in there knowing that he was going to be playing fast and loose with the facts. In addition to that, when he was pressed on the moment, like with the plant feral, crop fertilization, um, he, he knee-jerked into lies. No, I didn't. Oh, thousands of years. The, the part where Joe and, and Graham are asking him about him accusing Graham of being a racist, not accusing Graham of being a racist, that part shows it clearly because Flint's like, yeah, I said that. No, I didn't. Yeah, I said that. No, I'm like, ha, ha, ha. what do I need to say to get out of this one, Joe? Can we go to the next spot where I can bullshit you guys? It was really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. So it's nice seeing all of this get, get drug out and showed for what it is. Now, before we end this, there's there's one thing I really want to mention to the archaeologists and would-be debunkers out there. I, I've said it a number of times that this is Graham Hancock is just a stepping stone on your way to getting 10,000 subscribers. You, you An archaeologist shows up, they've got zero subscribers, and they, they make a video about, you know, whatever site they know something about, or stratigraphy, or freaking flint napping, some bullshit. And then they make a video debunking Graham Hancock because that one's going to get them some views. Their colleagues will come click on that to see if they have any good arguments. This this is something they all rally around. So they'll, they'll get, you can have 200 subscribers and boy, will get 5,000 views. It's worth talking about. So I want to let all those guys know, the would-be debunkers and the archaeologists or wannabe freaking content creators and all that. Listen, listen, listen closely here. Bring your A-game. If you're going to debunk Graham or any of the alternate history people and you have enough of a platform that, that I take notice, you better be honest because I will drag you for it. And I'm not the only one. And you better be accurate. I and mean, if, you, if you're wrong with your facts, I will be, give some leeway. You don't hear me calling Milo Rossi a liar. You don't hear me calling Stefan Milo a liar. But if you deliberately forge facts to build a narrative, if, if you hide things, if you obfuscate things, if you just knee-jerk into lies, dude, I will drag you for it. I, I will not stop until, 
I'm not even done now. I've, I've, the video I'm working on next is a paper that Flint Dibble and freaking John Hoops and Carl Feagans all co-authored together. And holy crap, is it bad. It's what's been taking me forever to get done with it. In addition to me having arthritis lately and being a little little under the weather because of it and having trouble sleeping and whatnot. In addition to that, this paper is it's just fucking hard to read, man. It's horrible. <laughs> Wait till Sunday. The full length video will be up. It should be close to an hour long. My God. And it's it's grotesque. It's grotesque. These guys don't write papers. They write manifestos, man. It's just fucked up. But anyway, I, I want to thank y'all for watching. I appreciate you uh, watching me kind of ramble with this a little bit more unscripted, a little bit more just kind of, <laughs> I gotcha, bitch tits kind of thing. But the reality of it is, he got himself. All I did was shine a flashlight on it. And I feel vindicated, but I'm not like, I'm not like arrogant. I, I don't want Flint's life ruined, okay? I don't. I enjoyed talking to him up until it got to the point where he would not budge on this. But the thing is, I want him firmly out of our community. I want him and all the guys that are going to act like that to stay the fuck away from us. Because if they come in here with that kind of dishonesty, that kind of just freaking hubris, and, <laughs> and they need to be removed from the plane arena and i am happy to say that at this point right now flint has privated his tweets hopefully flint he'll find some integrity come out and say you know what man yeah i was wrong here i was wrong here i probably shouldn't have said this like that i probably should but but we all know that's not going to happen now we all know he has doubled down way too many times. He's told lie after lie after lie to where he spun this into this whole ball where it is his online persona is wrapped up into that Joe Rogan debate. And he'll die on that hill. And so, well, I guess today Joe killed him. Instead of Flint killing Atlantis, Joe Rogan killed Flint Dibble's public persona. So, anyway... New video coming out on Sunday that'll be more betterer than this one. Thank you very much. Very pleased to have uh, been part of, of getting this accomplished. And um, see you next time.